It's one of the biggest big lies ever propagated. It's so pervasive, so woven into the fabric of everyday life that it can be almost impossible to detect. It's a con game of unimaginable scale, so sweeping that even when one facet is exposed, the razzle-dazzle of its other sides quickly obscure the meaning of what you've seen. It has managed to create that most elite of positions for a societal threat, a problem that is endemic but has rendered itself culturally invisible and almost taboo to discuss. Seeing through that invisibility and understanding it from the outside, for what it really is, may be one of the biggest intellectual leaps you ever make. What concerns me? It is intrusive. Or celebrity magazines. It is manipulative. Television with 500 channels. It restricts our choices and lives. Some guy's name on my underwear. It affects our worldviews and characters. I say stop being perfect. I say let, let's evolve. Let the chips fall where they may. Every day, each of us is bombarded with around 1,600 commercial messages. This sounds like a massive number, but when you think about a typical day in your life, it is quite possible. A typical day might feature the following activities. Get up, read the paper, featuring advertisements, listen to the radio, advertisements, catch the bus to work, advertisements on the bus and at the roadside, arrive at work, advertisements on the internet, Go home, same advertisements as on the incoming journey, watch TV, advertisements, and go to bed. Needless to say, this is exposure to a lot of advertisements. Just take an example from one source. In a randomly selected weekday edition of The Sun newspaper, there are 41 advertisements, taking up roughly 22 pages of a 64-page paper. Over one-third of the paper consists of advertisements. We are exposed to advertising through a range of different sources. Some of them we may be aware of, but others may be less easy to spot, such as product placement in films. One of the most famous cases of product placement was the use of the American chocolate sweet Reese's Pieces in the film E.T. in 1982. As a result of this placement, sales of the product increased by 65%. Placement has now become so common that some films are being criticized for becoming little more than vehicles for a range of products. Advertising is just the tip of the iceberg. There are many other influences in modern society that promote the values of consumerism. To get a sense of these influences, imagine yourself as the recipient of mental inputs, the messages that enter your brain from the outside world. They could include the opinions of your friends, images from TV, celebrities we aspire to copy, advertisements on the internet, and things you have learned from books or your education. Both advertising and consumerism itself try to manipulate us into adopting a particular view of how we should live, rather than letting us decide for ourselves. One might argue that advertisements are simply there to make people aware of the products available to them and serve no purpose other than this. But this is not always the case. Many advertisements and other communications in our consumer society go way beyond this function and attempt to manipulate people into making particular decisions. Modern advertising is not just about telling people that a product exists. It is now about creating wants and needs that we might not have had before seeing the advertisement. In other words, it creates false desires and needs in us by manipulating us. The advertiser's ultimate purpose in creating these needs is always to make people want their product. Otherwise, why would Coca-Cola alone spend $2 billion per year on advertising? But how dare anyone manipulate us into having these wants and needs? If I really wanted to do something, say, purchase a particular product, I would decide for myself that I needed it and then make my own mind up about which product to buy once I had seen what products were available. If, however, someone tries to persuade me that I need a particular product when I do not, and then attempts to create false feelings of dissatisfaction in me if I do not have it, this is an aggressive attempt to exercise power over me. This mental aggression is just as unpleasant as physical aggression, because its effect can be equally 
if not more, harmful. It might be argued that we should have the mental strength to resist the influence of an advertisement or our friends, or that consumerism is nothing more than a minor irritant in our everyday lives, but that would be to underestimate its power. Exposure to one advertisement can be powerful enough to influence someone, but when we are exposed to thousands of advertisements a day, and have been from childhood, and consumerism is promoted in most of the mental inputs we receive, this can trap us within a consumerist bubble and can mold our entire worldviews, our aspirations, views, lifestyles, and many other things. And this trap is very difficult to escape from. Indeed, such is its power. We may not even realize we are caught in a trap. So, the real power of consumerism comes from its cumulative effect. The fact that it has seeped into every aspect of our lives and that these elements of our culture continually reinforce each other. We slip into a cycle of wanting more things, another holiday abroad, or simply a particular type of food. And the pursuit of these things takes up our time, energy, stress, and money. Sometimes, money we do not have. We also constantly compare ourselves with other people both real and fictitious, wanting to be like them or in their position. This leads us into a state of constant dissatisfaction. We are never happy with what we have and are always on edge. And this is just what the logic of consumerism wants, as it makes us more active consumers on a continuous basis. So consumerism not only affects our behavior, but also our thinking. Other effects are perhaps less immediately obvious, but equally important. For example, consumerism can affect our worldviews and confuse us, especially when we start feeling that our lives are not providing us with what we need to be happy. From the Western perspective, we might have all the elements that constitute a good quality of life, job, car, house, and other material possessions, but we might nevertheless feel somehow dissatisfied and empty feeling that the pursuit of more possessions and the pressure of having to earn more money or sink into further debt to pay for this lifestyle is bringing more costs than benefits to our lives. In this video, we have not been suggesting that everyone who tries to sell things to others is deliberately manipulating them for evil ends, nor are we suggesting that consumerism was invented by someone with malign intent. It is simply a cultural phenomenon that has emerged over time and that happens to have a powerful influence in our societies and individual lives. We are all born into it and raised with it. Therefore, it is difficult to blame those who are delivering what the norms of the system say is desirable. There are, however, many people who are escaping the hold of consumerism or are questioning the effect it has on our lives. And we suggest that the modern form of consumerism has gone way too far and is taking our lives, hopes, and happiness with it. The things you own end up owning you. But do what you like, man.